Okay, fellas, listen up. I don't want to put any extra pressure on you out there today, but uh, we've got two home games in Europe, and if you don't get at least four points, season's over. Hi guys, I'm Ozzy Villain, and welcome back to your run on the Impossible Dream. Today, back to Champions League action. It's a doubleheader. RB Salzburg and Inter. Two of our last three home games. The other one, I believe, is against Tottenham. And, well, as you can see from the table behind me here, we've got four points right now. If we don't get another four, take us to eight, and then at least give ourselves a chance. We've got Rangers away, which is a game we could potentially win uh, to get us sort of over the, the, the ten points that we will need to get into the next round. If we don't get the four points today, I don't really see where they're going to cut. So the four, yeah, four points today. I don't really see where we're getting to ten because we've got the Spurs at home, and then we've got an away game against somebody else that's quite tough. It escapes me right now, but I'll let you know when I check in a second here. So huge games. No, don't want to put any extra pressure on us, but we need to win. <laughs> uh, but anyway, let's have a quick look at one game there is to catch you up on. That was in the league. It was against Gorica, a team that we always have a tough time against. Let's see how we did. We open the scoring with a great set piece. Before Pinter got an assist when Lacko steals the points in stoppage time. Uh, away to Monaco is our other game. So maybe we could get something there. You never know. But anyway, this game was very, very hard fought. We we made very, very hard work of it. They didn't do anything. You can see they got a shot right at the end. Um, but yeah, we really did struggle to, to, to sort of do too much. A lot of that, Madzar missed a couple of good chances before we took him off. But uh, what about the set piece? Skolibar ended up getting the goal, uh, but really, really nicely worked. And a Pinter assist as well. I think that's uh, the first goalkeeper assist possibly we've had at Urun. So very, very exciting. Now, the league table makes for better reading. And that is because Dinamo Zagreb beat Oziak, so our lead at the top is extended, and it's looking nice. 14 games in, that's uh, a very healthy place for us to be. And a quick look at the uh, the league leaders at this stage, and we're leading the way. We've got two of the top three goal scorers, or three of the top average match uh, ratings, and two of the top three assist getters as well. So it's all uh, it's all looking very good for Jeroen so far to win our title back in the league. Still a long, long way to go, of course, but this is a European episode today. And we are at home to RB Salzburg. This is the one. This is one of the must-win games that we have. We're expecting sort of a 3-2-3 out of them. Uh, a 5-3, 5-2-3. Anyway, you can see it there kind of behind me. Uh, now, they have conceded a lot of goals. So I was very tempted to go with our normal formation. But I thought, let's start safe. And then we can always, always attack if we need to. So Pinter in goal, Sanchez, Safranov and Crespi are the back three. Von Groningen and Gonzalez, the width. Gonzalez's recent form, where is he here? It's becoming a problem. He needs, he needs to do better. What's not helping him is uh, Kovacek being injured. It's Rovis. We don't really want Rovis if we, although we did very well against Gorica, but we don't really want Rovis if we don't need him. Uh, it's going to be Alvarez, Rasic and Gavia as the midfield trio with Cena and Vidal leading the line. Okay, so uh, now let's have a look at the team sheets. You know, this is a very good goalkeeper. He's someone that is on my list of goalkeepers to potentially go and sign should we lose Pinta. So he is good. Uh, and you may remember Nicolo Turco of, uh, of, of course, Grindavik fame. So uh, we had him on loan for a season there. But I don't recognize too many other names in that lineup. Uh, all right, so put on a show. We'll go with that. Hopefully we, get, uh, we do get a show and not a... Not a the crap show okay so here we go for some champions league action uh yeah we haven't got a draw yet by the way for the yags quarter final it shouldn't be too far away so i'll let you know what that is once uh once we have it but yeah we're uh, we're in our full stadium and hopefully we're going to get a good performance here from us uh i may need to go and change marking assignments actually if they have wing backs so we'll go and do that i think the real sad thing about this new stadium is we don't have the champions league bar anymore and I think we all miss that, don't we? It was uh, always nice to, <laughs> to just have uh, yeah, completely miss this shot because of the steel beam across in front of the camera. But anyway, it's progress, I guess, isn't it? It's not always good, but it's necessary. Um, all right, so let's go and make sure that we have these guys not marking uh, the wrong players. Whenever there's wingbacks, really, we don't need to worry too much about an overlap because it's just their wingbacks versus our wingbacks. They should cancel each other out in that sense. Here we go with Von Groningen, though. Cross comes in towards Ed Scavia, and we know he's got a leap of a frog. And it is 1-0. 
in the sixth minute, and that's really important to get that uh, that nice early lead. They've conceded they played Lyon and Sevilla, I think it was. They were both away games for them, and uh, I think they lost 4-0 and 4-1. So defensively, they're obviously not, uh, not in top form. Uh, which is why I did consider being more attacking, but uh, equally thought, like I say, if we start safe, it's easier to to go and uh, and try and score a goal at nil nil than be desperate when they're sitting back at you're sort of maybe one nil down and they're not one nil down, they're two nil down. As Gavia has two goals in the first ten minutes, and he suddenly well he'll be wanting a hat trick, won't he? Von Groningen with the corner in Gavia again the leap of a frog, and he makes it two nil. So this takes a bit of pressure off, doesn't it? Now there are two league games. That's a vicious leap from their defender there, Egan Resic. Uh, there are two games in the league between them, uh, between the two episode games today. One is against Hajduk Split. The other one, I want to say it's Rijeka, but I could be wrong on that one. Now Rijeka would be a tough game, particularly right before we uh, we face Inter. Um, as they've, they've done quite well there. And, oh, that's a cracking goal, to be fair to them. Um... That is a very, very good goal. And it's uh, suddenly, they say 2-0 is the most dangerous lead. And uh, yeah, Sanchez, was he just caught out there perhaps? Crespi couldn't get back. I tell you what, that, that is an unstoppable finish. So uh, there's not too much you can do about about that. Sometimes you just got to hold your hands up and say, well done. There's obviously things we could have done a little bit better there, but I think that's just a good goal, isn't it? Here we go now, Sanchez to Gavia wide for Gonzalez to Vidal. How does he miss? I was already celebrating. The fish was fist was clenched. And he's missed it. Cena over a free kick. Cena, oh, that's not a mile away. Have they angered the beast here, Salzburg? Come on, boys, come on. So yeah, we're, uh, hopefully we'll be able to pick up the points in the league as ever. I'll, I'll show you the highlights as Gonzalez comes forward. I really hope he's, he's playing better here. 7.1. He needs to return to his top form for us. Von Groningen chips it in. And Resic is there. Back in towards Cena. Off the crossbar. Which is always satisfying. Cena has his ninth of the season. And we are back to a 3-1 lead. Two goals up. Uh, yeah, this was, uh, this was a nice little bit of play here. Chips it in. It's not really cleared. Resic does brilliantly just to keep it alive for us. And Cena... Yeah, I mean, he probably doesn't want to hit the crossbar in that situation. He'd probably rather it go into the roof of the net, but that's fine. As Vidal is looking nervous, possibly after his miss, but that's okay. Von Groningen now. Rasic has it into a decent area, but fairly easily cleaned up by them. But that's a terrible clearance, so Von Groningen gets another chance. Alvarez to Gavia. Vidal back to Gavia. Gavia on a hat trick. Oh, he's rattled the crossbar. Gavia, it's still there. Stop Gavia. It's gone Vonnegut, sorry, but it's uh, claimed by the goalkeeper. And that is that. As uh, that's uh, Ostrava beating Sociedad away from home would be a little bit of an upset, I would have thought. Those are the sorts of results that, that, given, depending on how we go, could actually be quite devastating for us because uh, Ostrava would probably be one of those teams you'd expect to be down around uh, the bottom you know, trying to get into the top 24. I'm really interested to see how this this style of Champions League works out in real life. Because I think, in principle, I like it. What I I don't like is uh, that is Von Groningen hacked down. We continue, though. Alvarez picks it up. Can he pull the ball back across? It's a good one. Oh, and Vidal has been saved there, has it? And Von Groningen, is he okay? He seems to be okay. But yeah, I think in principle, I like the concept of the league table. So I always go back to, if you remember, that's like years ago now, but you, there was a group where, a year where Zenit St. Petersburg got through the league phase with four points. Um, and Napoli, I think, had 10 or 12 points and didn't get through because just the way that the groups worked. And what this essentially does is it just eliminates the chances of that happening, doesn't it? So you get your, your the best teams go through in that occasion. Napoli would have gone through and, and uh, Zenit wouldn't have. Uh, nothing against Zenit St. Petersburg. They were a decent team back then, but they were always... Uh, I forget who their manager was. It was I think it was a Belgian or Italian bloke or something. Um, but they were always defensively solid. I think they had Hulk playing up front who would whack in a couple as Gonzalez's cross is cut out. But I do think 
especially from our point of view, it's offside. The goal, if the, if the ball from Resic, I mean, I'm hoping we get a replay just to uh, see that ball from Resic. It was a volleyed pass. It was spectacular. Resic is really looking a great player for us, I've got to say. Watch this. That's superb. That is superb. It's such a shame. It deserved the goal just for the pass alone. Uh, Vidal's now playing a 6.3 and officially testing my patience. But we'll give him... Do I take him off? The problem with taking him off is that... Uh, well, we could probably just play him in the league, couldn't we? So let's get Lacco on. And we could go with a Mazzaleni and Vidal duo in the league, which is fine. Yeah, but I, do, I, I think, especially from, from this sort of point of view... We, I, I really miss being able to parachute down into the Europa League with uh, with our teams and the impossible dreams. I, I really thought that was that was that was the best scenario for us. Is that we could go into the Champions League, we could get the money, just try and finish third. I mean, try and get out of the group, obviously. But if we fell short, finish third, go down the Europa League and have a little bit of a run there. There's a cracking pass for Vidal. Vidal. Oh, it was a very good attempt. And perhaps a more confident Vidal would have uh, would have stuck that one away. Gonzalez now, can he stop a cross coming in? Well, it is only a two-goal lead still, so we've got to be a little bit careful here. Gavia, like, nice to see him working hard. He's playing a little bit deeper here, of course, than he would normally. As that is a goal kick. We do just need to be a little bit careful here, please, fellas. As uh, Leverkusen have a lead. Uh, Saucier Dad's come back. I haven't seen an uh, uh, Aussie X score as of yet. Uh, I'm not sure. I, did, I forgot to check if they're playing today. Or they may be playing on the match day tomorrow. I think we're the Tuesday right now. Cena, nice ball wide for Von Groningen. Lacko's in the middle. Cena's getting forward. Lacko sticks it away where Vidal probably would have hit the post. And it's 4-1 in the 70th minute. And that should be that. So we needed a big three points here, and it looks as though we're going to get it. Nice work, nice build up, and oh, it's like a little reverse foot finish there from Lacco. That was cheeky. Probably unnecessary as well. <laughs> it's in the back of the net, so that's fine. Uh, I wonder, Gavi is looking a little bit tired out there. Uh, we could give some game time to Haska. Um, which would probably be welcomed for his development. As there's a ball over the top for Turco. Pinta makes a big save. And the highlight might continue there, no. Uh, anybody else we want to give game time to here? Not particularly, because we want to try and keep people fresh for the league as much as possible. Resic is tied and on a booking. You know what we could do, actually? Siraj is coming back from injury. We could give him just a, you know just 10 minutes. We're not worried necessarily about development for him. As Von Groningen is in. Von Groningen. We've seen him score that goal before, haven't we? On this occasion, the goalkeeper makes the save. So yeah, we'll just give Siraj 10 minutes to get some match time into his legs after his injury. He's, was he 22 now? Yeah, so he's not going to develop that much more. There's an argument to say we, should, we could cash in on him. Um, but he's Siraj. He's got to stay, doesn't he? He's got to be on the bench if we ever make a Champions League final. And we are coming in towards stoppage time. Let's see. Let's see what we can do. That's not what we needed. And uh, I thought that was Omarovic for a second then. Because I think we signed him from here. We sold him to Germany, I think. And it's looking as though it is... Oh, wait. No. It's the last kick of the game. It's Siraj. Can he get a Champions League goal? Oh, it was a crossbar. It wasn't a mile away at all. And that's just about the last kick of the game. So 4-1. Very, very nicely done. We needed three points. We got three points. A little bit nervous at the start there. But more or less, it was uh, under control. So that makes for much, much better reading now, doesn't it? If we could beat Inter, and I can't see Inter in the top of the league there, then that would be our 10 points. And suddenly, it's like, what the hell were we worried about? But yeah, Inter's, Inter's struggling a little bit. They do have a game to come, though. So maybe that will shoot them up the table a little bit. But that was, look, where uh, Salzburg are here. That was one that we really, really did need to win. So glad we did. So Jeroen Hammer, Red Bull Salzburg. We get our 2.4 million. Von Groningen, three assists, 100% tackles one. That's a pretty good all-round performance, wasn't it? Uh, so that is that. Guys, wait right there. We'll play through a couple of games in the league, and then we'll be back for Inter.
Okay, welcome back. Now we have our draw for the round of uh, round 16. It's the quarterfinal of the Croatian Cup. So the Jags will be away to Rijeka. That is a tough one. Rijeka are a good side this year, uh, well into the European spots in the league. And in fact, we played them in between our two Champions League games. That was the second game. The first one, though, was against Hajduk Split. We took the lead through Steven Cena. And it was 2 0 when Sanchez crossed for Cena. Before Crespi got a third. Gonzalez crossed for Gavia to make it 4 0. And Montel found Vidal to make it 5 0 before half time. Cena completed his hat trick. And Siraj got our seventh. So, absolute destruction of Hajduk Split. They actually sacked their manager after this one. Uh, not surprising, having uh, you know, conceded seven, which can't have happened many times in their history, surely. Uh, so, yeah, that was a absolutely stunning result. Now, we had an international break. We had uh, a Champions League game coming up sort of, uh, midweek after this one. So, it was Rijeka with a team that we sort of scrambled together. Let's see what we could do. We took the lead when Zalak found Lako unmarked. But Rijeka pulled level just before half time. And then took the lead in first half stoppage time. But we pulled level late on when Siraj found Perso. Only for Rijeka to win it in stoppage time. So disappointing, obviously very disappointing. It was away from home. We saw all the goals they scored were sort of late in the halves, you know, stoppage time for two of them and the last minute before half time. I wondered a little bit if it was maybe down to tied legs. That might be me just, uh, you know, clutching at straws. Robbers looked every bit and uh, has been, uh, to be honest. We took him off at half time and Kentolic came on and did quite well in the second half. But yeah, you can see the match ratings. Pinta had a bit of a mare. Uh, Haskart, we took him off at half time as well, just after half time. And yeah, it was just uh, it was just one of those. We I think a, a rotated side lost to a good team, and of course we have to face them with the Yags soon. So let's hope that's not a uh, something to show for that. But the league table, if we have a quick look here, it's still looking okay. Uh, Oziak and um, and Dynamo are, are currently behind Rijeka. It's still a seven point gap, so it's it's okay. It is okay. We've just got to be consistent. That's all we've got to do. And if we lose one, just make sure we don't lose the next one. Uh, all right. So that's that. Let's have a look at this Inter. And we're expecting a 4-3-3 out of them. They are currently 19th in the Champions League. We are currently 16th. Now that we're the Wednesday. So there has been games on the Tuesday, which is why it's maybe a little worse than that uh, than we would expect. Now, a bit of a blow for this one. Alvarez. He is uh, injured. He's back in full training tomorrow. Um, so we don't have him to sort of sit in front of that back four, which means it's going to be Scott Howe. So Pinter in goal, Sanchez, Safranov, and Crespi. Von Groningen and Gonzalez, the width. Howe, we've signed him to do this job long term. He's coming in to try and do it against a very good team a little bit earlier than maybe would have liked him to. But let's see what he's got. Uh, Rasik and Gavia will be in midfield with Cena and Vidal up front. Oh, it's a Pep Guardiola coached into side. Uh, Rico Lewis, uh, of course, at Man City now, isn't he? Taribo, who I think is Luke, Cham Luke Chambers. No, I'm thinking of Callum Chambers. Luke Chambers, though, is a definitely a name that sounds familiar. Uh, oh, Cocaine Ronaldo is in their lineup. Well, let's hope he doesn't come back and haunt us here then. Uh, what do we want to say to this? Um, put on a real show. I, I mean, are we at home? We are at home. Um, oh, is that what we go with? That feels that feels wrong. I, I I feel like that's wrong to Lu to Ru, whatever your name is. I'm not sure we should have said that. So let's see what happens. Um, yeah, I, I didn't realize Cocaine Ronaldo had gone to uh, had gone to Inter. I know he wasn't playing much at Newcastle. I was keeping an eye on him, and he wasn't playing much. So I'm not surprised that he's left. I've just I've missed that uh, transfer going through. Um, but anyway. Let's see what we get. We know he's good, don't we? But to be honest, if you look at our team now, would we have him over over Vidal, Cena, Lacco, Mazzoleni? He, he'd probably fit in there, wouldn't he? To be honest, he, you, it, but you wouldn't you wouldn't sell any of them to bring uh, a Via back. I don't think. Uh, maybe I'm wrong on that one. But uh, let's see. We've got some defending to do early on, and. Uh, it's a second-minute penalty. Who was the idiot that did that? 
Sanchez. All right, come on, Pinta. We need you here, mate. This is a game we really do need to take something from, and we're going to be doing it from behind because we are 1-0 down in the third minute. And that is not at all what was needed. It's not the start that we needed. It's not anything that we needed. And Pinta just went the wrong way. That happens. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes you just go the wrong way, don't you? All right, so we've had a lot of possession. So it's not like... It's not like they're outplaying us. They got a penalty from a free kick. So let's try not to panic here. Let's encourage us. And let's see what we can do. I'm wondering the fact they have a DM in, if maybe putting Gavia forward might help. Um, it's the same old story though. Why don't we ever create anything? All right, let's be let's be more expressive. Let's see if that helps us. Um, we're behind anyway, so defensive discipline doesn't necessarily matter too much. But uh, I find it really confusing. It, it's sort of... I can't remember if we had this problem in previous versions of the game. I don't remember ever, though, having... Where well, you'd have so much possession and just would not create anything. Let's try a demand more. This is where you need the old get creative shout, isn't it? Because we have been anything but creative. We've had 52% of the ball, and we've had one shot off target. And we've got a corner. Can we get level before half time? It's a good one, and Gavia is there. And we've created absolutely nothing, but we're level at 1 1. And it's a really good header from Gavia. Attacked it beautifully. And in first half stoppage time, we have got ourselves level. Look at that. Gavia, for, he's, he's an absolute beast in the air. And he's scoring more goals, I think, now from that, that sort of thing than he is from, uh, you know, playing on the ground. And that's absolutely fine. It's like our own little Tim Cahill, the Mexican Cahill. All right. Um, it's actually not a bad... Uh, that's actually not a bad comparison. Where is he here? He's the Mexican Cahill, isn't he? How have I not seen that before? Anyway. Um, relax. I think just relax. I, I think... We've maybe put a bit too much pressure on ourselves going out there trying to put on a show. And we could look at it the other way as well, in that they've had a penalty and not created anything else either. So maybe you know, it's just two teams cancelling each other out. But let's get out there. Let's not give away a second minute penalty, which we've not done. And let's see if we can go and uh, go and win it now. Oziak 1-1 against St. Gallen. That's a game they really do need to win, isn't it? They're having just gone behind as well. Okay, at what point do we change things and what do we change? Vidal is not having a great game. Um, so let's take him off for Lacco. I've had to promise Lacco first team football as well, which is which is fine. Uh, he's a good player. But uh, obviously it's never nice to have to sort of be forced to play someone and by play them, it means start, doesn't it? Let's be honest. But we've got some league games coming up, and we will just start him in all of those, and maybe give him a sneaky start in the Champions League. Can we... Oh, that is not Von Groningen what was needed, dude. Oh, dear. Okay. What do we do now? All right, so what we've done... Is we've taken we've brought Kovacic on for how we're getting rid of yellow cards and Gavia's gone off and we've brought Montel on. It means we don't have someone sitting in front of the defense right now, um, but we have to have something that you know we have to give something up, don't we, to to be able to um, yeah sort of move around. Um, so I think I think that's what we do. Um, we go back to being more disciplined. We have to try now to just uh, see this out. And I do want to give a team talk here because he is hesitant, is Kovacic. Uh, so I wouldn't usually do this, but Kovacic, let's... Uh, I don't usually do these talks. Make an impact here. There's no pressure on you tonight if he's hesitant. Or does he need um, make me proud? Oh, we motivated him. Excellent. Excellent work, Aussie villain. <laughs> I used to always do those things, and I just kind of don't bother for a lot of it now. But, um, yeah, we, we 
can't afford to have hesitant players on the field if we can help it. Now, we've got a highlight. To be honest, right now, I would snap your arm off for a draw. So I don't really want highlights, but let's see what cover six got. Resic to Cena. Can Cena pick out Lacko or Montelford? We'd probably like to have Gavia looking to get under the cross, if we're honest. Crespi, you're a centre-back, mate. It's oh, it's looking very good, and Lacko certainly scored. And we, oh, he's onside, isn't he? Oh, he might be off. He might be off. Playing it back in my head, he might be off. Can we take the lead? With ten men, we can! And Lacko has done it! The ten men of Jeroen have done it. And we are 1-0 up. Oh, he's onside. He's behind the ball, I think. And we are 1-0 up with a man down. Have some of that pep. And, yeah, he's behind the ball. He's behind the ball. In my brain, I was trying to play it back, and he was like, oh, maybe he was behind those defenders. It doesn't matter if he's behind the defenders. He's also behind the ball. Montel now. Montel gets it wide for Kovacic. Can we go and get a third? Resic. Resic back to Kovacic. Kovacic to Resic. Resic. Oh, look at that. Gonzalez. Time, space, shoot, scores! And the 10 men have scored twice in two minutes. And it's 3-1. 10 men. We only need 10 men. Kovacic has come on and changed the game. Oh, they want Von Groningen back on if they're if you're into. And Gonzalez just whacked his foot through it. Just absolutely whacked his foot through it into the back of the net. And let's now tell us to focus. Let's not get excited. I'll get excited. You guys focus. <laughs> Gonzalez, here we go again. Safranov, back to Sanchez. Gonzalez still in space. We use him. And this is, oh, Cena, just a heavy. I wonder if Cena and Laka got in each other's way there a little bit. It looked like, didn't it? And Inter come forward. Still 10 minutes to play. So we've got to be a little bit careful here. Rasic does okay. Kovacic does okay. But still, they have the ball. And now we're a little bit caught out at the back. Crespi's been caught out. Pinter, though. He's there to punch it clear. And we'll have a corner. Let's get this one away, too. They go short. It's very pep, isn't it? Oh, that's not good. We've not covered that well. Pinter's there again, though. Oh, I was not expecting to score two goals in two minutes with ten men. And this is a massive result. Absolutely huge. This will take us to 10 points, I think, doesn't it? This will get us out of the, the league phase, as that is dangerously close to a penalty, but we get away with it. Oh, we've not marked up well. Luke Chambers has scored. And now it is slightly panic stations, it must be said. Um, so let's just... Uh, hang on, let's, let's, let's pause. Let's just take our time here. And make sure that we're set up the way we want to be set up for these final few minutes. We surely, surely need to hold out here. Um, I wonder... Do we have a Zalek? I don't know that I want Zalek on. Do we trust Alvarez? No, I don't. We don't need. We don't need to be doing this. Okay, we don't need to be making changes. Let's put you on as a deep liar. You just sit back a little bit, Montel Resic. Yeah. All right. You guys just sort of. Keep the ball in midfield for us. I wonder if actually what we want to do... Hang on, brainwave. Um, we bought Lacko off the bench. He's got his goal, but I wonder if what we actually want... No, Cena's the title of the two. Is... Let's get another Let's get another body in midfield now. Uh, Zinko can do that. He can go... Box to box, I think. And then we'll just stick Lacko up front by himself, deep lying forward on support. Just hold it up there for us, please. All right, cross everything. Cross everything. Let's see this through. Six minutes. Where have we got six minutes from? Probably all the celebrating I did. All right, here we go with Kovacic. It's a bit of a risky pass. Oh, we're, we're, we're not right. It's not right. It's not right. Um, We didn't have an out ball there at all, did we? Let's get it wide. Let's just get it wide. Let's play in their half. Distribute over the def <laughs> It's just too bad. Let's just let's just put it over their heads and put pressure on them higher up the pitch. Come on. Come on. Oh, that's huge. That is absolutely magnificent. We we were clinging on a little bit at the end there. I mean, you'd expect that though. We're we're a man down against a good inter side. And 
Well, that is huge. And Von Groningen, where are you, mate? Where are you, Von Groningen? You muppet. Um, disappointed, I think. It's probably... <laughs> That's one word I could use. So that is our 10 points. That should be us out of the league phase, which is just unbelievably amazing, to be honest. Uh, Inter put themselves in a little bit of trouble now. Oziak are currently outside looking in as well. We could really, they could have done with winning their game, wouldn't they? But uh, we could really use them going into the next round as well, just for the league coefficients, uh, league coefficient sake. But young Jeroen Shine against Inter von Groningen. Yeah, I mean it was it was justified, wasn't it? So he gets his he gets his fine. We won't be appealing that one. Uh, it means we'll be missing him, of course, for the next one, which is the Tottenham game. The Croatia boss was looking at von Groningen, may not have liked what he saw, uh, saw there, and Resic. And uh, yeah, so Kos, uh, Kovacic will have to play against Spurs. And that will be next episode. We'll come back for the Jags quarterfinal. Away to uh, Rijeka is a tough one. And then our final home game of the league phase against Spurs. Three home games in a row. It's, in a way, it's good. But it would have put a lot of pressure on us if we hadn't got these results. But we've got six points today, which is massive. Can we get another three against Spurs? We'll find out next time. Take care.